Good afternoon. Welcome to the City of Helena City Commission Administrative Meeting, June 21st, 2023, 4 p.m. Meeting is called to order. Madam Clerk. City Attorney Doctor. Here. City Manager Burton. Here. Commissioner Dean. Here. Commissioner Lopez. Here. Commissioner Reed. Here. Commissioner Shirley. Mr. Mayor, uh, I do not see Commissioner Shirtliff online quite yet. Mayor Collins. Here. Welcome and thank you for participating in the City of Helena City Commission Administrative Meeting. We're pleased to be able to provide this alternative meeting format in the city's effort to broaden public participation. Please be patient as we may experience technical difficulties during the meeting. We welcome your public commentary. Use the following tips and guidelines for the app usage and your participation. Commissioners, comments, questions? Presentations. Helena Area Community Foundation Fiscal Year 23 Grant Report. Director Frazier. Hello, um, Mr. Mayor and City Commissioners. Um, thank you for having me today to speak about the grant making programs that the Helen Area Community Foundation has been doing with funding from the city of Helena. Um, there are three reports that are um, included and they are long um, and parts of those are repetitive. So, um, you know, I don't know that you need to read our 990 more than once or even that many times, but um, I would just like to kind of discuss what we've sent, what, what's happened with the program and what we see as the, um, you know, hopeful future for it. Um, I think Sheila actually wants to start. So I should <laughs> stop talking now. Um, thank you, Mayor and um, Commissioner. I was just gonna lead off with a, with a few points um, regarding the Helena Area Community um, Foundation and the partnership that the uh, city has um, with their organization. Um, on an annual basis, they have um, come to us to report on um, the utilization of the grant funds that the city has provided to them. Um, we have uh, given them $402,000 from the COVID relief money that the city received. Um, and then uh, we distributed $20,000 in fiscal 22 as well as part of an uh, annual MOU agreement with them. And then in fiscal 23, we uh, funded them again at $20,000 and in the preliminary budget for fiscal 24, we're proposing um, the additional $20,000 contributions at Allen Area Community Foundation. Next slide, please. So just a, a little bit of a history of the, um, how we came to be a partnership with HACF. Um, the city used to uh, take grant applications from various different organizations and um, not only to the city but also to the county and in fiscal 22 uh, the city staff and the um, uh, city commission and as well as the county commission um, made uh, uh, felt that it was probably more efficient if we transition those efforts over to um, a professional uh, grant funding organization um, such as HACF and um, kind of got us out of the business of having to have work sessions to go through all those applications ourselves. And we turn that over to HACF who are professionals in, in uh, screening applications, determining um, whether or not their programs have, uh, you know, some, some measurable outcomes. And so they've, um, so she's, uh, uh, so Emily Frazier is here and um, they've been administering these funds for the last couple of years. Historically, we have uh, uh, funded grants throughout various organizations um, since 2018, between 20 and $25,000 coming from the general fund. Next slide, please. Um, as I noted before, uh, we have given them $402,000 of COVID relief money. Some of that funding went for administrative fees. Um, they spent uh, in their first cycle $320,367. They have 30 grant recipients. Um, their board and their staff scored all of the applications. The maximum grant for that particular funding cycle was $14,000. 
Um, they did have open meetings and public comment for their for their uh, process, and they distributed those funds in uh, September 2022. And that information is in your packet tonight. And I'm sure Ms. Frazier will uh, go over it in more detail. Uh, we also provided them uh, with the uh, the additional 20,000 20, in fiscal 22. Um, they distributed $19,000. There were 10 grant recipients. Again, they went through scoring and um, open meetings. The maximum grant for that distribution was $2,000, and they distributed those funds in 2022. For the 2023 grant cycle, again, they had $19,000 to distribute. They uh, kept a thousand for administrative fees. Um, they had 13 grant recipients. Um, they did the scoring and open meetings and they have distributed those funds in 2023. And again, those applications are provided to you in their packet. And all the detail as far as who received the grant um, from HACF and, the, and their process um, is in your packet. But at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Frazier to go into more detail on that. Or I can take questions before I do that. Mr. Mayor, can I ask a Please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm not sure if this is for uh, Ms. Frazier or Director Danielson, but so if I'm tracking right, the 60,000, the two that have been distributed were fully expended. The original 402,000 looks like 320 was expended. Mm -hmm. So do we have a balance in that fund? And because I didn't see that anywhere in here, but it was long, so perhaps yes. it's <laughs> and thank you. Um, Ms. Frazier is going to go into a little bit more detail on that and should be able to provide you an answer with that. So I just okay. want to kind of give a lead in of what's been distributed, what's been um, uh, uh, spent so far, and then Ms. Frazier can go into more detail. Sure, and if you don't mind, I'll jump right in and answer your question. Um, I'm thinking that what happened um, when she was putting this together, and again, there was, I mean, I printed off reduced copies and I have a whole binder. Um, so we actually have had two cycles of the COVID relief funding, and so it has actually been fully expended already. And Sorry, so okay. this, oh, no, that's not a problem. Um, and that's, there are lists, so we do have it broken into cycle one and cycle two. So um, the whole, uh, my after the administrative for HACF, that was $388,000, and it has been all completely sent out. Um, we do anticipate continuing to report on that for at least one more year, possibly longer, um, because with that one, the, uh, there was a requirement for nonprofits to match the funding they received. And so until they have completed their expenditures and their matches, in our mind, it's not closed. And so we will continue to report as it's closed. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, but yes, I, I would just quickly um, remind that, uh, like I said, there is a lot of information. And I think that especially if there are um, questions or concerns, I'm happy to dive in deeper on any individual piece of that. Um, but the main things I'd like to highlight is one of the reports that you received is our um, impact report. So there is a specific report that is required uh, per our MOU. And uh, a good example of that is the 2023 three report that's included. That's got all of the little bits and pieces, including uh, IRS letters, 990s, detailed minutes. Um, the 2021-22 grant impact report is more about the stories. And that is not a requirement of the MOU. However, um, we do think that it is important for nonprofits to be telling their stories. We like collecting their stories and helping share those. Um, and also, I, I think that we'd be remiss if we didn't share that with you since the funding was from you. And I think it's helpful to see what has been done. So we did include those. And if you haven't had a chance to look through them, I, I highly recommend you do. Some of them have pictures. They're great stories. And um, I think that uh, given our, our current parameters for what grant funding um, criteria we've been looking for with this annual MOU, it's been fairly open. Um, and our board and um, evaluation committees do review that annually. We review our processes annually. And so there are there are potentially times in the future where a, a need so specific will have emerged that we would be more um, focused. But at this point, what we've been asking nonprofits are, what's the thorn in your side that a small grant could solve? Um, and that has been greatly appreciated by the nonprofit community. 
the larger, um, the largest report in this is with the COVID programming, and as we as as Sheila mentioned, it's um, that one was a much larger pool with a much larger grant base. Um, Fourteen thousand per nonprofit is actually a pretty significant amount of funding, especially for nonprofits that are matching that. And so we did anticipate it would take a little bit longer for those reports to come through. So um, again, we do expect that to take a little bit longer, um, but we and we do intend to provide impact reports, and in that one, we'll include detailed match accounting because that would be, I think, necessary to verify that it was done correctly by the nonprofits. Um, and so, um, in our first year working together, we did all of these um, cycles separately. So we had a city county cycle in 21-22, and then we had. Um, a COVID cycle, and then we had another COVID cycle, and we had HACF's funding separately, and then we had a flood, so we threw an emergency funding cycle in there, and um, by the end of 2022, we were tired, our evaluators were tired, and the nonprofits were tired too. So in 2023, we did a combined cycle approach, which included HACF's own funding, city funding, and county funding, and so instead of granting um, several smaller pools. We did it all at once and nonprofits were eligible to receive up to 2000 from either a city or county entity and up to an additional 2000 from HACF. Um, we think that that system worked and we plan to do that again going forward, assuming that funding from the public entities continues to be awarded to us to, to use in that way. Um, but we've also learned some things that we um, are excited to improve upon. Uh, so we've learned that, you know, really being, um, there's nothing like an open meeting to make you realize the things that you maybe didn't have fully thought out when you started the conversation. And so um, we've really learned some things this year and uh, going forward, we plan to introduce a few new aspects. Um, one would be a different type of evaluator training. We do have board members and staff members that participate in the program, but we also have community members and making sure that all of these um, groups have an idea of the vision of what the funding is for and how uh, what kinds of things we're willing to consider from nonprofits it's much easier conversation to have when you're not in open meeting uh, so we're going to do that a little differently in the future um, and then we also are planning to do a grant writing training for uh, nonprofits that we hope will cover uh, the combined grant cycle but also provide just additional um, information to nonprofits that could be useful for other grant programs as well. I'm a certified fundraising executive. I have a master's in philanthropy and development. I have done these types of trainings before. And so um, I don't know why it never occurred to us that perhaps we could get the cart out ahead of the horse in there, get the horse back in front of the cart and give people some extra tools. So those are the things we're hoping to do. Um, I do think that if nothing, um, I know that as far as budget dollars are concerned, this fee is a lot of commitments. A lot of them are bigger. Some of them are probably more important. Um, but I would want to just highlight that I think that this program and the ways in which it is showing um, collaboration between our nonprofit and city entities is um, important. And it has been noticed by the nonprofit community. Um, the grant application levels shot up significantly in 2023. And I think that says a lot about um, what this program means and how it's being uh, attended to by nonprofits. Um, so I think those are very good things and we very much hope that you'll uh, be able to consider to continue this and um, you know, as we continue to grow our organization and um, you know, more, have more available, um, I think that those collaborations could become even more significant in the future. Right now, our endowments are relatively small. We're putting out, you know, $40,000 a year annually for grant funding. Um, but if those were to change, which we very much hope it will, um, we could be in a position where we have more available to grant and being able to have, have built that relationship with the city and with the county, I think could provide avenues where if in the future we have more funding available, um, we can also be choosing together um, to help fund things that are good for Helena, not just based on what we're seeing. So if that makes sense. So, But I do, I'm happy to answer questions or address any concerns. Um, but, as much as I love hearing myself talk, I won't. I won't read reports to you. Um, Director Bruce, please. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, Director Frazier. I thank you for answering that question. I had been operating under a, a fuzzy possible <clears throat> assumption that there was funding remaining from that initial CARES Act, and I had been a bit confused about you know where that was versus other things. So your clarification helps, and I think it is it's a great program. I'm very happy to uh, you know consider continuing it. Um, and the explanation of consolidating the different pools as a nonprofit person myself, I think that's great. So. I appreciate your responsiveness to our nonprofit community. Thank you for all the good work. Please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the I really love the impact report piece in here. Um, not that I don't mind looking at the 1990s and the rest, but I think this is really digestible, and I think it may be a little easier for the community to grasp if they just want a brief idea. Um, and just want to thank you for all your work. I The impact of these dollars compared to like four years ago, I think is pretty substantial. Um, it's been a huge help to the city <laughs> in terms of administration. And um, I think that at the last meeting, our, we are including it in the budget now. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. I thought we'd all decided that. So I'm, I'm really glad that we're supporting it. Um, I know that things are tight this year, but um, the impact it has for lots of different organizations is, is pretty significant and we very appreciative of your work. Thank you. Do we have any comments from the commission? Uh, do we have any public comments? Madam Clerk, could you check online, please? Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, I have no public comment online. Director Fraser, thank you. Thanks for your presentation and thanks for all the work you do for the city. Thank you. Transportation Systems Department for Fiscal Year for Improvement in Conditions of Streets, Traffic, Parking, and Transit. Director Kamapke, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor Commissioners. I'm going to just start off. This, these are our proposed fees. Um, and You'll see the current fee and proposed, and then some and some maxes. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Cooey for a uh, presentation. But we'll be, uh, these are just a summary. Um, the full um, breadth of the fees are in your packet. Well, good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioner. So, as we went through our budget work sessions, um, and I noted to you all that we had some uh, fee discussions coming up that we would get to as part of those budgets that we submitted. So now that we've got the preliminary in coming up, um, so I have the fees that go with some of our revenue projections that were in there. Take off, get started. So our, our three areas that we have fees in uh, are parking, transit, and then our streets slash our transportation at large. <laughs> so some of our more administrative type fees. Uh, so we'll go through each division. So as we go through this, we'll look at our present or current fees, our proposed additions or changes to them. We will solicit feedback from you all, including the public. And then we'll look for some direction moving forward on how to bring these about through resolution to get them approved. I do. <laughs> Chris clearly has a lot of time on his hands. <laughs> I'm not put this together today after I got called out. Um, so moving on to parking. Um, again, you guys should all have these uh, the full lists in your packet. Um, the one thing that we didn't include on the table were the pay to park and the hourly rates. So you see at the bottom there, my little asterisk of the, so the hourly rates will be included. We're not looking to change any of the, the pay to parks or the kiosks or the, the surface lots that have the, uh, the dollar for an hour and things like that. So those will be a, a part of the uh, official fee schedule when we get there. Um, the rest of these, most of them are, are permit or violation based. Um, and so one of the, the biggest ones that we'll have that'll have an impact is our uh, parking garage permits. So when we did our uh, fee calculators, I don't know if a couple of years ago, we put together these calculators that bring in all of the costs to make sure that we're actually recovering what it 
costs us to operate some of these places. And so uh, the garage permits should be somewhere more in the range of about $100 a month in order for us to be really at cost recovery. Uh, we know that we can't make a jump like that all at one time from 75 to about 100. So for this year, we're proposing to take that up $10 a month to 85. Um, that'll have a big impact on some of our larger customers, um, people like uh, the businesses downtown that buy lots of permits for their employees, uh, Montana State Fund being one of them. And then if we go down the list, I'll, I'll call out a couple of them, I'll go through all of them. We'll, we'll take questions if you want to talk about specific ones, but again, permits on service lots going up about $10. Um, we didn't change for the loading zone permits. They went up, but the additional permits didn't go up. So we do have people that have more than one loading zone permit. So those additional permits will stay the same. And get into the rest of the parking fees. Um, so the private law enforcement that so we do have uh, our parking control officers. Uh, we have the ability to do agreements with private uh, lots and we can go around and enforce those and so there's either uh, timed or untimed so the time would be you can be there for a certain number of hours um, the untimed would be that you have a permit that allows you to park in those lots so the current rates on those are only about two dollars and 23 cents per parking stall um, and we go there multiple times during the day uh, and so that that just wasn't covering it so we're Proposing to take the timed ones up to $4 per stall per visit um, and trying to limit that to having at least 10 parking spots in the lot. Um, we don't want to go around and enforce every two or three parking spots all over town for private lots. We want to make it make sure it's actually a big enough lot to be worth the time to go there. Um, you go on the list, the vehicle and trailer parking for uh, contractors and construction. So. We have it where they have special permits. So if it's just, you're gonna be there for a couple of days uh, working on a project. So that will go from five to $10 per day. Or if you do an annual uh, agreement with us, it goes from 250 to 275. And then at the bottom, all of the ones that have the little tick mark, these are new fees that we're proposing. Um, so these ones don't exist yet. These are what we're looking to add in for this year. Um, the big one, the Seasonal vendor, vendor permits. Um, so those are to sell food or goods in the pay to park areas. Uh, this is similar to something that Parks has done with their having the food trucks in the parks. Um, so what we're gonna try and do is limit that to only giving out one of those permits per block. And we'll make sure that it's not on a block that already has a parklet on it so that we don't really crowd up all of the rest of the parking ability in those areas. The pricing really is based sort of on the parklet idea. So the parklet's at $2,500 for the season. We know that if you're going to take a food truck or set up a stand to sell something, um, you're not there 24 hours a day for the whole season like a parklet would be. So we more or less took about half the price of the parklets um, and made that the cost for these vendors to have a, a solidified space somewhere in the pay to park areas. Special event fees are in here. So the parking is sort of our home base for processing the special event permits. Um, so those fees are rolled under the parking. So we have the $100 per application for uh, up to 1,000 uh, attendees and then $250 for over 1,000. And then $25 for a noise permit. So, and, and a lot of these fees are born out of the idea that we don't have those now, and uh, some of them are new processes, some of them are not, um, but they do take a lot of staff time to get through. There's eight or 10 departments that have to go through and sign off on all of the materials that come in for the permits. That's where a lot of the cost comes from. So that's it for parking. We can stop there and take questions if you have some. I know the manager had his hand out there, so. Commissioner first. The only question that I had here is, David, Chris, if you could go into a little more detail on the parklet charge. I think that originally it was $5,000. It was closer to six, yeah. And that was based upon projections on lost parking revenue. 
Correct. and then used it. <clears throat> and I'm happy to see it on the list commission consideration this year. But that's the history as I understand it. Yes, Mayor Commissioners, it was based on mm -hmm. taking up basically two parking spaces for the parklet and then, you know, taking the revenue at 85% because our parking is based at 85% occupancy downtown and calculating it out from April 15th to, to November 1st. And that's where the, the cost came up. We had some um, concern or we had some comments come back and in consultation with um, the city manager and I, we decided to lower those to uh, the 2,500, uh, trying to make it a little bit more economically viable for uh, folks downtown to take advantage of the park. Thank you. Yeah, we should. Well, you go first. Um, okay, thanks. Um, for the vendor, seasonal vendor, um, are you counting one per block for both sides of the block in terms of having the trucks. My concern is that there's a park, I'm thinking of a particular place where there's a parklet and frequently food trucks across the street because this uh, establishment does not have food, but people like to bring food in. So, Mayor and Commission, the, the thought process is one per block so that we still maintain parking for um, visitors and and, uh, and people that uh, and the, the employers themselves. And then also with having that parklet there, that would be taking up that too. So it's kind of just try to get the services there, but still try to maintain enough parking so that everybody can accommodate the use downtown. I would just maybe, I think I would be of the opinion that like particularly I'm thinking like my Blackfoot, almost always a food truck there that people will often go to when they're getting a beer. Um, and I, I, I would prefer if we not, I mean, I think it's important to have the food option there just because there's not as many options on that block. Um, unless you're going to like that grill. And we want people eating when they're drinking. So, Mayor and Commissioner Dean, so uh, the, the other idea we have on it is um, the when they apply for the permit, uh, depending on where they want to park, it, it'll kind of determine how much space they're going to take up. So in a scenario like that, they'd most likely be doing the parallel park. So we would only expect them to take up one spot uh, and then they would have to serve to their customers from the sidewalk. Um, so we, it'll probably be a case by case review basis as we go through this. I don't, I know we've had some interest in it. I don't know that we've actually had anybody since we don't have a fee or a program for it really yet. Um, we haven't quite gotten all the kinks worked out and how it's going to work. Um, so if they're on the opposite side of the street, we could probably count that as a different block. It's, it's really just about trying not to congest the area for the rest of the people that would like to park and enjoy downtown. So across the street is a separate block. I mean, blocks are typically. So again, Mayor and Commissioners, a normal block, we, we would look at that, um, but depending on the parking configuration, if you know, there was a mid-block crossing or if there was a crosswalk there, we'd have to take that into consideration on how much parking we were eliminating. If it was angled parking to get them to be um, basically parallel to the sidewalk, they would be taking them more than once spot. Um, so, again, I think it would be a case by case. We'll try to maximize um, the opportunities. And again, I think it's going to be take us a year or two to look and see how it works. And it might it might come out to the um, like the parks has on the walking mall where we have designated spots that um, are just designated that way. So I think this is, you know, the first time for this program. And I think we'll learn a lot in the first year or two to see how effectively we can be with it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor um, and Director Kanapke. I'm super happy to see us moving towards coming up with systems for these things. I think it's great. Um, 
personally on the parklets. Um, I, I've heard a lot of public comment on this subject. Um, I've talked to some of the business owners. I think the investment in the parklets is incredibly expensive for the businesses to design them and build them. Um, and as it was put to me once, you have to sell a lot of $5 beers to recover the cost of the parklet and the, you know, the annual fee. Um, and in addition uh, to the sort of economic piece, but I think getting people outside um, and enjoying our limited time outdoors should be as incentivized as possible. I would love to find a way for us either to have it be a nominal fee or no fee, uh, because again, these businesses are investing in those outdoor spaces. They're making them beautiful. They're getting people outside. Um, so if there is a way within our budget to accommodate the lowest possible fee slash no fee, uh, I did speak to quite a number of businesses who had considered parklets and decided not to because they couldn't afford it. Um, and I think that's a shame. Um, I think, you know, one of the businesses would have had a lot of younger people enjoying outside. Uh, and I think it's something we should try to incentivize where possible. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Commissioner um, Shirley, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Director Konopke and uh, Assistant Director Kui for this. Um, I appreciate the discussion specifically as uh, uh, more specifically towards the parklets. Um, I too have received some feedback from business owners uh, regarding the cost, the prohibitive cost of these. And I do appreciate the, the uh, cost cutting uh, from five or $6,000 down to $2,500 a season, you know, it makes it $312 a month, but uh, these parklets, uh, you know, expand the, the area of business for these business owners, but also too, it makes it more accessible for people that might not be able to make it into the building. Um, I appreciate the, the discussion. I would encourage um, receiving feedback regarding the parklets, uh, working, continue to work closely with downtown businesses, but also too, uh, with regards to food trucks to work with vendors to see uh kind of work with them to find a, a good working relationship on the fee for those uh, seasonal vendors on that seasonal vendor permit. Um, uh, but thank you very much for your work on this. That's all for now, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yeah. Please go ahead. Thank you. So I'm just curious as to the, uh, relative to the park list, what kind of back and forth you had with affected businesses relative to the fee, I mean, if you if you had a comment on that, uh, Mayor Commissioners, we heard this um, late winter, early spring about you know the fee being too high, and that's when um, I, we took a hard look at it and decided that we could go down to twenty five hundred uh, to try to make it a little bit more economically viable for the parklets. That's that's where we landed. Um, uh, so how many businesses is this will, will this how many park lists are out there currently currently we have the blackfoot and the uh gold bar that have the park that's out there and what kind of potential would you say is out there for it? um uh, mayor commissioner logan we I think we had applications and discussions with one or two others when we first started the program. And uh, the kind of discussions fell off halfway through the summer. And some of it was building related and, uh, because since, because it's in the right of way and, and it, it, uh, it requires a building code, building permit and it has to go through building review to make sure that it meets all the criteria. I think it's. I think there's some possibility out there for for businesses, uh, but you know, each each parklet typically takes up two spaces, and that is part of where the downtown gets the uh, the uh, how the parking gets its revenue to pay off some of the loans and pay off staff uh, expenses and other expenses within the parking division and. So that's where we're trying to come up with the economic piece, but still um, make sure that parking is getting reimbursed from those lost spaces. Here, um, <clears throat> Commissioner David, does the 10 mile count as a parklet or is that under a different authority? Um, 
Mayor Commissioners, that is a right of way use because it's a closed right of way. It's it's a different um, a different thing because it's uh, it's on the walking mall. And, and do Mayor if, yeah. do we charge a fee? No. That's so. If it was an exclusive like the. Um, Mediterranean Grill or Suki Cafe, that's an exclusive right of way use where only their customers get to use that. Um, the agreement with the 10 mile is a non exclusive, so those seats or whatever they put out is open to the public to sit at. Um, so that's a little bit of a difference between the exclusive and non exclusive. But the exclusive does come with a 5% market value of the area being taken up. Mayor, I was just, <clears throat> David, correct, correct me if I'm not accurate. But, uh, it, it is my understanding that we moved fairly quickly to respond to businesses for the parklands. Uh, uh, I think we had done our best to set the fees based upon comparative revenues on the park side. I do believe this is the first time that it's coming forward other than informal discussions with the commission for consideration as a policy, which is up to uh, obviously the commission. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> at this point, this is our best recommendation, not that, not that that's a final decision until you all make it. So, if there's any further analysis, I think we've analyzed it to the best of our abilities. Um, but now it's in the commissions. Thank you, uh, Manager Burke. Commissioners, in my opinion, me personally, I think uh, reducing it by half is fine with it. With the 2,500 that you're reducing. So, Mr. Mayor, um, I, I, I am glad we responded to that. I will, I think on the, I understand why we're talking about um, a vendor permit since we are losing revenue. Um, I don't know if we, and make it's just for thought, um, I don't know how many vendors are actually there before four o'clock. For parking after that. Um, and that's usually when the food, I mean, I know that there are some during the day for lunch, um, but I don't know if that's maybe a conversation where you might only be there. Like, if you're going to be there between, you know, eight and four, you can get out and four and after, or five and after. Maybe no, you know, I, I don't know what that looks like. I know that we want to leave room for people to park downtown. I also have a feeling we'll hear something like, well, you're not making money but anyway. So, Mayor and Commissioner, to address that, this fee is only if they want to be there between the enforcement hours of eight to five. Outside of that, if they're outside of the eight to five, then they wouldn't be required to have a bit of a permit. That makes me feel more comfortable. Yes. Yes, Mayor. Uh, I guess I share the concern about that has have been expressed by other commissioners about it being, you know, about the big um, challenge we'll say for the for the business, the effective businesses. I'm assuming the uh, the parklet is up. April 15th to November 1, then the spaces are available thereafter. Is that accurate or correct? Parklets, they don't remain in place year round. American uh, measures know between the April 15th and November 1st is the window for the parklets, um, just because of they typically come right out to the edge of the travel lane. And then for plowing snow or removing, it would be um, difficult to remove that downtown. Okay. Any others from the commission? Yes, I think I already said it, but again, I think to the, the lowest possible fee 
backslash and those would be my preference. Again, having spoken at length <clears throat> to businesses, I know this year they were late getting them out due to weather. Uh, and I think the businesses that invest in our downtown and in, you know, well, of course, they should be incentivized slash uh, we should recognize what they are doing for our uh, community. So I would love to see us bring that fee down as low as possible or eliminate it altogether because I don't think it's a lot of business, but I'd like to see more businesses uh, willing to take that step. Thanks. I just have one that one. I know you mentioned this during the budget and I just want to could remind me, how much do we have left on the um, inner cap loan for the parking? We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get back to okay. something's not coming right off the top of my head, but I'll email it. It's not okay. I might also add that we also have um, the certificate of participation they the state fund um, that's, you know, for another 20 years. Yeah. So, and we don't cover the full cost of. Payments for that from the state fund. The city subsidizes that revenues as well. So that we have two debt obligations and that fund and have to be paid as well. That was a nice deal for them. <laughs> okay. Do we have any public comments? I no, you're still going on. Right? Oh, I still got more, Mayor. You know. <laughs> yeah, but since we started discussing, do we have any public comments on this stuff? Mr. Mayor, Commissioner, I, Commissioners, I have no public comment on that. Okay. Please continue, sir. Okay. So moving on to transit. Um, so this is another one that we talked about in the, the budget discussions that you know, our current rate for just a single ride is 85 cents. Um, our state reporting software doesn't recognize less than a dollar. Um, so our proposed fees at this point was to go to three dollars um so i know that when we had originally come here during the budget session uh, i opened up my phone and scheduled myself a ride on uh, uber lyft and it was about 10 15 dollars for me to get here from my office um, as opposed to the three dollars that we'd be proposing to go to in the city um, so all of our uh, proposed fees in here are based on the rate of the three dollars per ride so we could that that's our request um, obviously we wouldn't like to see it be less than a dollar because that really wouldn't be a raise at all to address um, the idea with a lot of these is that we we tried to discount them so the the more you invested in capital transit the more you were getting back for that investment. So as you go sort of down the line, you can see that the 10 one-way rides, so it would be technically at $3, a ride would be 30. We'd be offering that up at $20. So you would get a couple of them for free. Um, and then all the way down that list to the unlimited uh, annual pass at $999 you would ultimately get about two months or so worth of the year uh, for free if you did an annual pass. So uh, again, same concept, the tick marks are the ones that we don't actually have in a fee schedule right now. Um, so those would be new ideas and, and we tried to come up with as many uh, for lack of a better term discounts as we could and, and programs for as we could. We also added in um, a student charge um, or a student discount program for it. And the one that is sort of important to see is that same day ride. Um, so the way that the software works for transit, um, if you schedule the day ahead or prior to even that, uh, the software will find a spot for you for sure. If you try to schedule the same day, just like any other ride service, you're sort of at the mercy of what's available and how quickly you can get it. Um, but we can, for the most part, we've been able to fit all of those same day rides into that window that they're looking for uh, up till now. Um, but it is looked at as a premium service. 
right? So that it would be instead of $3 for the same day trip, it would be five. So one of the things, Mayor Commission, that we tried with the unlimited, and I know the $999, you know, seems like a very <coughs> steep price tag. Um, we wanted to give the opportunity out there for um, businesses or groups that have this to, to basically buy a discounted pass for an, for an annual use. And that is unlimited um, one-way rides when you purchase those unlimited um, rides or those passes. So the numbers are basically based on, you know, somebody going to and from work and then going to and from someplace, you know, someplace else, the grocery store, the movie theater, whatever. Um, and I think that uh, if someone is dependent upon um, the, the bus for their primary um, transportation needs, they'll be using a lot more than three one-way trips um, a day, or they might have you know busy days where you know. You know, they're trying to make different appointments and such. So we tried to make it as flexible as possible. Um, and as as Chris said, we you know tried to go down. If you did a week, then you got a day um, free a month and so on. So we tried to discount it um, to, to make it as attractive as possible. We understand that some of those are, you know, in the economic feasibility for some, but we want to try to um, provide as many options out there for folks to ride the bus as possible. And as Chris mentioned, you know, we are requesting the $3 because that's um, pretty much what our same service is going for in, in other um, cities uh, with, with similar service, same with the premium same day rides. Some are less, some are more. Um, but this is where we feel that we need to be so that we can also start to offset the general um, funds contribution to the transit um, fund. Because this year we were at four hundred eighty uh, um, thousand um, dollars. With these increased rates, we'll be able to offset that and make some of the general funds more available um, with the revenue taken in from transit. Thank you, Larry. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Director Taki, just I don't need specific numbers, but the 30, 20, 10 passes, are those popular now? Do, do people use those? Um, Mayor and Commissioners, yes. We, 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 I think we're implementing electronic passes, so it'll be easier to refill your card or use them. And I think that'll be more effective for people than trying to remember um, their punch card. When I see when I when I see punch card, I think of my you know back to high school or grade school when you had your your lunch card that, and many times I forgot that at home because you know so I think the electronic um, pass would be more, uh, a lot more beneficial for folks because it won't be a physical um, pass that they have to have. I would just say briefly, I think this looks great and all the innovation in transit has been very cool to see. I've heard a lot of good feedback about it. I like the movement towards uh, making it easier for people who use transit regular, regularly. It's very hard to say. Um, I'll be curious to see numbers on the weekly, monthly, et cetera, passes to see where our riders are and what works for them. But I'm, I'm very appreciative of seeing that. So thank you. Um, I have one, one question and one comment. Would it be possible for us to see the, um, like what the annual revenue difference would be if we did $2 a ride versus three? Uh, just because I mean, I'd be curious to see how much of a dent it would make in our, the general fund contribution or not. Um, and then my comment, um, I just want to thank um, Dr. Chucky and Mr. Cooey for including the student um, pass um, items. As you mentioned, those are new. Um, and this is going to be significantly helpful to students who need to get to um, specifically mental health appointments not in the school. Um, I, I reached out to Director Kanaki after one of our behavioral health um, advisory committee meetings and 
Holland Public Schools was discussing how one of their biggest needs right now in supporting students is just getting them rides to appointments during the day um, that's not on school grounds, especially when parents can't leave work to take them or maybe a parent's not readily available, et cetera. And this is like the safe alternative that is going to be so impactful for many, many students um, and save counselors a lot of um, time away from school driving them, you know, to and from appointments and not being able to serve other students during the school day. So um, thank you so much for moving quickly and um, being able to help one of our partners and, and kids where there was a really big need. Mayor, Commissioner Dean, so to, to answer your question, so our projections for when we did the budget and the revenues um, is that we're estimating in the realm of about 50,000 rides a year. Um, so that dollar difference would be about 50,000. So obviously if they went through and took advantage of some of the discount programs, it would probably be a little less, but I'd say somewhere between 30 and 50 would be the effect of that dollar. Mayor, commissioners, I just wanted to ask a question of Director Kanopke and um, Deputy Director Cooley. All of these talk about passes and per month, per pass, per week, but it doesn't talk about whether or not they are per person or can you use that package deal with different people? So family could buy one of these and everyone in the family could use the pass. Do you see what I'm asking? Um, Mayor Commissioner. Not at the same time, I'm assuming. We're not, not at the same time, obviously. But. Uh, Mayor Commissioner, we'll have to look into that because it'll be software dependent on how the ride gets scheduled. And that is typically um, by the person by phone number. So we would have to look back at our software developer to see if we could put something in place for like a family pass or, or something along those lines. Any other? Yes, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Knopke and Mr. Cooley, thank you for the presentation. I'm not sure if you're done yet. And Danae, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> So I guess the, the question I have, and again, you may not be done, but at, at what point are we making the decision? Well, we're bringing it. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure of the date yet, but it'll be coming across the hall. Right. Commission. Soon. Soon. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, Mayor, I just uh, was wanted to jump back to parking to answer Commissioner Dean's question on the um, balance of the intercap loan. That's two hundred and seventy thousand dollars. The balance on the um, certificate of partici participation is six point two million dollars. Do you know when both of those are done? Pardon me. Do you know when both of those are done? Um, yeah, the, the intercap loan is um, up in about three years and. Sorry, the certificate of participation. Yeah, it's, it's about another 20 years. Um, 2039. Don't be old then. It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So our, our last area here is our streets and sort of administrative fees. Um, so a lot of these we're not really proposing changes on to the ones that exist now. Uh, so you can see our street openings, um, our right of way use fees, things like that. So those are all uh, proposed to stay the same as they are now. And a lot of that is because there's some collaboration between our department and public works with engineering and things like that. So it takes a little more time to work through those and, and, and try to change those fees. Um, and then all of the new ones that you see at the bottom are things that we uh, provide now, but don't have an official fee schedule for. Uh, so we wanted to bring those forward. So the winter trailer permits, um, 
we've just been providing those to the public all winter long. Um, and it does take up uh, staff time, and things like that to do. So the street signs and regulatory signs, those are essentially going to be, I think when we bring it to the commission for approval, um, we might suggest changing those just to actual cost. So some of these uh, we think are averaged out a little bit. Um, and so it'll more than likely it'll be as an, on an actual cost basis. So if they damage just the sign or just the pole or the whole thing, it'll be whatever the cost to replace that particular sign was. Um, but they are, to give you an idea of how much the signs are, these are probably pretty close to what it costs for the signs that are around town. And then uh, the emergency trailer use on uh, the sidewalk grinding. So again, for using some of our emergency signs, so we, we have a tendency to lend those out in emergency scenarios. Uh, if a sidewalk collapses into a vault, uh, something like that. Uh, we want to make sure that we can get it closed off right away uh, so that it doesn't present as, as big of a safety hazard. And then once that property owner has the ability to uh, get their own equipment into place, then we'll take ours back. But um, again, sometimes they get stolen, they get lost, they get damaged. Uh, so we just need a, a way to recover the cost uh, when things like that happen. And then the sidewalk grinding, um, so this was something that we started as a pilot program, I think last year or the year before. And so it was the city manager actually had some work done on his sidewalk with this program. So um, this is one that we uh, want to offer out to the public and the $50 is really just to cover the staff time and the, the cost of the equipment to go through the blades and things like that. So, Mary Commissioner, just to follow up on that sidewalk grinding, it's been a very good program. Uh, it has helped uh, numerous people that just had that lift on their sidewalk and to grind it down to, to make it a non-trip hazard uh, without the expense of a contractor coming in and taking out that entire panel. So I think it's a very beneficial program and um, you know, probably in the future getting it out and advertised more. Um, we'll probably get a lot more participation than we have um, just by um, business. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I had a question um, with regards to the, uh, where was I? Um, with the with the park and ride or the uh, capital transit, uh, with the inflation that's happening in the property taxes that we're facing, the increase from 85 cents to $3 is pretty substantial. I, I, is there, a, I guess, I'd like to see if we could see options. I know Commissioner uh, Dean had asked about, you know, the dollar amount, if we could see options for a dollar, $2 or $3 a ride. I do appreciate the, the, um, the uh, discounts that are being offered for the unlimited rides, et cetera. Um, considering the demographics of who rides the capital transit, I'm not aware of that. I'm sure you I, you may have this, uh, uh, Mr. Kanopke or Mr. Cooey have the demographics of who rides um, capital transit, but if there were discounts for seniors, if that could be possible um, or other discounts that we could consider, um, I, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I apologize. I had a question on the first thing that I forgot to ask, um, and it, it's not specific to parking, but uh, the fees for permit, the staff time, et cetera, since permits do go through multiple departments, will multiple departments be charging fees for time, or is that the one place there is a fee on a permit? I think that's the answer, but I just, for the public, want to make sure. Mayor, make sure that's a one fee. That's, okay. that's it. Thank you. Um, and then I would just say I support the idea of um, considering discounts on transit for, um, I don't know if we have a separate fee structure for the paratransit or oh. if we could consider something, um, the options for some discounts, uh, I, I would be open to that. American commissioners will definitely look into um, some additional um, 
discount programs similar to the student program. Uh, one thing I'd like to add about the transit rates is this rate has been in place, um, I, think, I think it was 19, like 85. It hasn't been increased since. Um, so that is why that there is such a large um, jump, um, but we do understand that that does have an impact um, on folks that are using our systems. And, and Mayor Commissioner, so I'd, if you remember back to our budget session, um, I think I did have a, a chart with the different uh, revenue streams. So I can bring that and, and include it in the packet again when we come back uh, to the commission. So. And my last comment on this one, Mayor Commissioner, is that that is an accurate depiction of Director Kanapke in his office. Um, <laughs> nice shirt tie with his hard hat. You can take the engineer out of the field, but you can't take the field work out of the engineer. Okay, so are you done, sir? I am. Commissioners, any comment, questions? Do we have any public? Commissioner Shirley, did your hand up or you just didn't put it down? He's in the pastor. Okay, do we have any public comments on this? Mayor Commissioners, I have no public comment on that. You can make a comment. I can do it. Oh, yeah. the public arts and annual report chairperson Brees, you have the floor. Hello, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, my name is Amanda Brees. I am the current chair of the Helena Public Art Committee, and I'm joined here by my with my vice chair, Max Hay. Um, and I believe did we get the annual report sent over? Okay, thank you, Bridget. Uh, but yeah, today I'm just going to be presenting to you some of the projects that we've worked on the last uh, year or so. Uh, we are a uh, we currently have eight members on our uh, committee, and uh, we have one youth seat available. Uh, we meet, um, uh, I think the uh, the third Wednesday of of every month and um, have our next meeting tonight after right directly after this meeting and uh, the mission of the Helena Public Art Committee is to cultivate advocate and preserve public artworks in the city of Helena and we aim to develop and collaborate on projects that are a source of pride to residents represent the unique and historical identity of our community and are um, accessible to everyone. Get yeah, uh, but yeah, we could probably just move on to the second slide. Please, I believe that's page three. There we go. Uh, so one of the first projects for this fiscal year was the installation of the uh, Boundy Memorial sculpture. Uh, this project um, first came about in uh, winter of 2020, and then it was finally installed and dedicated in uh, July of 2020-22. Um, I know several of you were at that dedication event. Um, it is installed on the um, east end of the Civic Center, and the project budget for that was about $30,000, and that was a uh, donation to the city uh, with, from the Bounty family from the donations that they collected. Um, and that was with artist uh, Paul Logan, and it was a collaboration with the Helena Public Art Committee, the Helena Open Lands Department, and uh, the City of Helena. We can move on to the next slide. 
no relations to Commissioner Logan. Yeah. Um, another project uh, that we had um, in July of 2020-22 was the Six Forward Wayfinding Mural. Uh, this was a community collaboration with the Rotary Club um, and was completed by artist Madison Ruff. Uh, the uh, total project budget for this was 15000 and the project contribution of the city was 5000 to um, kind of bring this to fruition. Uh, but this is some of the first public art in the Six Forward, and the hope was that it would spur more kind of creative place making opportunities uh, for that district. Um, another project that we've been working on are uh, an, were another round of traffic signal boxes. Uh, we had a call for artists last year and then due to weather, uh, these are just now being installed around town. Um, so these should be popping up here, here this week. Uh, we selected four artists um, and had a project budget of about $5,000 for this. Um, around Helena, there's 17 boxes wrapped total and um, wraps typ typically last around five to seven years and the program started in 2018. Um, there are over 20 blank signal boxes that remain across Helena, although all the remaining are owned by Montana Department of Transportation. <clears throat> One we've been most excited about is uh, the Centennial Tunnel Mural Project. Uh, this has been a collaboration with the Helena Public Art Committee, Helena Open Lands, Parks and Recreation Department, City of Helena, the Railroad Urban Renewal District, and uh, we've been working with local artist um, Elise Perpignano. Uh, the project budget for this is $15,000 for 3,000 square feet of mural. And this was partially paid with $7,750 in Railroad Urban Renewal District TIF funds. Uh, she began work last week, um, I believe, and I know people have been really, really excited to kind of see this come together. And uh, I'm excited to kind of watch the, watch the progress this summer. And a great opportunity to be able to kind of showcase the, you know, the history of the Railroad District in a very fun and colorful way for um, Centennial Park. Uh, some other things that we've been working on um, as a committee is um, we've been working with city staff to create a comprehensive database of over 50 pieces of public art throughout the city of Helena uh, with updated descriptions and photographs for all entries. Um, this is available on the city of Helena's um, website and we'll actively be updating entries and adding entries as they become available. So that way there's kind of, you know, one central database of all the different things, or at least all the different public art installations around. <clears throat> We've also been working to uh, try and assess and anticipate any public art maintenance needs and all the associated costs for that. Uh, one of the public art maintenance projects that we completed this year was replacing the old dilapidated signage on the women's mural. Um, and we installed a new plaque in November of 2022. Uh, we also provide chalk donations and community outreach at various public events throughout the year, um, downtown and otherwise. And uh, yeah, just try and kind of share more information about public art, public art with people. Uh, looking forward, um, we hope for the second phase of our tunnel mural project uh, to be completed in summer of 2020-2024. And that involves the Lindale Tunnel, which is all still a part of Centennial Park, but connects to the Great Northern Town Center, um, as well as hopefully um, creating some dumpster art as well, where we would be transforming four to five trash receptacles on city-owned properties with public art during a uh, live painting event. Um, we saw the success of the uh, Rodney Street District um, dumpsters and have, have seen kind of what a kind of great thing it's been and would love to kind of continue the success of this and then hopefully continue that in, in coming years. Um, in recent years, uh, HPAC has been able to further our mission and leverage, leverage our budget by providing funding to public art projects developed and administered by external stakeholders. 
Um, we support this successful model that encourages the creation of public art and recognize its importance to the community while minimizing the administrative workload on the city of Helena. So we're trying to find these community collaborations uh, to partner with service organizations um, and others to bring yeah, public art to different areas and to find different needs in the community and work together to um, kind of leverage each other's budgets to kind of bring some different things to fruition. Uh, the Sixth Ward Wayfinding Mural was a community collaboration as well as uh, the livery building and the Rodney Street Is project, which was part of that fiscal year 21. But we've seen um, kind of how successful that's been and would love to kind of continue, continue that work, um, as well as continuing to do strategic planning and constantly refining and developing our five-year strategic plan with a vision that supports our mission, mission statement. Um, alternating our focus with a mix of small projects, um, developing comprehensive proposals for larger scale projects, and exploring opportunities for additional funding, um, such as grants, partnerships, and a percent for art program. <coughs> and uh, I believe that's all I have, but I'd be happy to answer any questions if anyone has them. Thank you, Chairperson Reese. And I want to personally thank the committee. I hope. We have a bunch of dedicated uh, members on that committee because I was part of it, and then times just didn't permit me. So, but uh, I know how hard you work. So, thank you guys. Comments or questions from the commission? Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Merritt. Thank you for the presentation. I've been delighted by the public art lately. I think Rodney Street got people paying attention to other art. Um, I love to hear that there's a, a database of it, but maybe if if it would be possible to get it off the database, I don't know, QR codes seem to be the thing, but people ask me all the time where other public art is. Um, so if there's a way to help get the word out that there is a place people can go and look and find other things, I think there is a lot of interest. Um, again, Rodney Street is a big, huge splash. And I think the tunnel will also, but I think there's a lot of interest and the more we can get the word out about where to find it, I think that would be great. So thanks for all your work. I was. I saw one of the new um, utility box wraps yesterday when I was leaving my office, and it looks awesome. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And um, I'm just always so impressed by your committee's enthusiasm and creativity. And it's one of those things that you see the impact from right away. So really appreciate all your work. I know this makes a long day for you <laughs> because after you. <laughs> You go into that one. Any other comments from the commission? Any public comments? Oh. Mr. Mayor? Go ahead, Commissioner. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate that. Uh, Ms. Reese, thank you so much uh, to you and your committee uh, and your presentation. It's exciting to see that it shows the creativity and the vibrancy of Helena. Um, I agree. I think uh, there might be potential to work with Visit Helena uh, to help kind of promote this artwork, not just to our citizens, but to the people that visit our community or could potentially look at visiting our community. I think it's, uh, I think art, uh, the art and creativity, I think it's uh, more the better. So thanks for doing what you're doing. Public comments. Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, I have no public comment on that. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right, recommendations from Helena Citizens Council, Representative Stephens, you have the floor. Hello, Mr. Mayor and commissioners. Um, we have been working on several items through the Helena Citizens Council. Uh, one of those was Fire Safe Montana came and did a presentation to us about uh, fire mitigation measures and they have a grant and we're waiting to hear from Amy Teagarten when that gets officially um, put, pro, pro, uh, put into proposal. And um, we, the Citizens Council is very much in support of that. And we'd like to make that more available to the public so that anyone that wants to do some fire, wildfire mitigation would be able to do that with the expertise of this Fire Safe Montana. Um, group. Also, we, our outreach committee had a meeting last night. It was called the Greet and the Meet. 
at the public library from six to eight. And we had several of our representatives there and it was uh, pretty good. We had, um, you know, not a lot of people. We had some of our people show up, but we wanted to inform the public and we're going to try to do one again in the fall and that will hopefully be better attended. Uh, we did get a lot of people that stopped in after the Children's Trust and um, the meeting that rally that was in the park, a lot of them stopped in. But so that was good. It was a good way to kind of acquaint Helena with what Helena Citizens Council is all about. And we all, um, all of our district representatives were involved in placing door hangers around Helena. I don't know if any of you people received them, but we all were um, tasked with hanging door hangers and speaking to constituents if we found if we see them and letting them know about the Citizens Council, all of our representatives, we acquainted them with the website so that they could find out which district they are in and also who their representatives are. We've also put our uh, people were, um, have signed up for election again this year. I'm not sure how many we have, but I know we're still looking for some representatives, especially from some of the districts. So if any of you know of anybody that would like to run, we'd, we'd love to have them join us. Also, we uh, just finished our budget proposals that we um, handed over to the commission. And um, so we're just kind of waiting on that. The Citizens Council put together our budget proposals. So that's, that's about all we've been doing. It's been quite active, but um, I suspect over the summer, it'll slow down a little bit, but we are looking forward to another meet and greet in the fall. So, and we'd love to have any commissioners that can join us. That'd be great too. So. Just want to let you know that. Any questions from anybody? Thank you, um, Representative Stephens. Comments from the commission? Any public comments for Representative Stephens? I have no public comment online, Mr. Mayor. No public comment. Please read it out. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. I, I do not have any public comments. Oh, you don't have any. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Representative Stephens. Mm -hmm. City Manager report. Mayor, I have nothing to report. Okay. Department reports, general saving, general fund saving update. Director Danielson have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. So without um, Amanda here, I'm gonna to try to do this. Um, as efficiently as she has been um, bringing us to you over the last several months. So um, in the packet is um, a brief presentation and I believe it's an able. Hopefully try to bring it up. Chris, Chris, Mr. Cooey. <laughs> oh, Turn it up, he's better at <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. So, um, uh, <laughs> I'll let you just move on to the next slide. So um, I just wanted to recap the uh, distributions thus far for um, the general fund savings. Um, we had resolution number 20782 that distributed uh, $5,223,720. And then we had resolution 20788 that distributed $464,000, which included that $200,000 allocation for the wildfire prep. Um, in resolution 20802, um, we adjusted the allocation to the wildfire prep to 47,000, so that put 153,000 back into the non-allocated funds. Um, we allocated 1.580 million dollars to Rocky Mountain Development Council, $250,000 to Helena Food Share and $143,000 to the Tri County Fire State Program. All of those allocations to date total $7,507,720. We have a pending resolution that's coming before the Commission on um, June 26 to allocate funding for pool operations so that uh, we can um, have them operate with seven day a week operations with no early closures and, um, and uh, no, no staffing reductions. And so that resolution um, is coming before the commission on the 26th for $203,000. 
Um, so pending and allocated funding to date is 7,710,720,000, leaving $775,900 balance left to be allocated. Next slide. Um, so the balance, again, um, pending the resolution vote on the 26th is $775,900. <clears> there was um, an internal request for $15,000 for the Memorial Park Ice Cream Warming House study that has not been allocated, but just as a reminder, that was an internal quest, request that was pending. Next slide. Um, the external community um, Grant summary, again, we had 1,973,000 that was allocated to three external requests. Um, I know that the uh, bottom slide, this was um, input by um, Ms. Opitz. So um, the Warren Nelson Stadium uh, request from Carroll College was um, re uh, redacted. So that leaves um, total community aid uh, grants that were still considered at 1,214,000, which 64,000 from the Regional Sports Authority, 400,000 from United Way, and 750,000 from Family Drops. Next slide. So at the May 25th work session, um, there was a request to kind of uh, put together a uh, a summary of each uh, of commissioner's interests in remaining projects. Um, Commissioner Dean Logan and Collins uh, <coughs> wanted to fund a comprehensive recreation plan. Commissioners Dean, Shirtlip, Reed, and Logan uh, wanted some funding for the solar project on city property. Commissioner Dean, Shirtlip, Reed, and Collins uh, expressed interest in funding Case Kids. Commissioners Dean, Shirtlip, and Collins expressed interest in funding uh, uh, exploration works. Those are internal city projects, external community projects. There was interest by Commissioner Dean, Logan, and Collins to fund Family Pro Promise, Five Services Building, Emergency Shelter. There was uh, interest from Commissioner Dean, Shirtlip, and Collins for the Last Chance Powell Community Development De Demonstration Day funding. And Commissioner Dean, Chirtlip, Reed, and Collins expressed interest in funding Good Samaritan Warming Shelter Adult Day Program. And then there was interest from Commissioners Dean, Reed, Logan, and Chirtlip to fund a downtown public restroom. Next slide. So what we're looking for uh, from the commission today is um, if there are any further discussion for uh, funding priorities that you'd like to see move forward. And um, if you need any future, future information or any more information from uh, staff to bring that uh, to the commission for funding consideration. And I do have posted the pending resolution for the June 26th commission meeting for uh, allocating to the pool. And at this point, I'll just leave it open to the commission for uh, questions and discussion. Well, uh, Mr. Wright, just a quick question. I don't think I missed this at the beginning, but next, I don't know. Um, the the uh, net amount um, that we released of the contingency after refunding the sidewalk. Well, I forget what fund it exactly. The streets fund, I think it went to. Um, our contingency are 1.6, and then I think it's 160,000 or so. What fund does that sit in now? Is that just sitting in the general fund? Okay, so we could consider, say, for example, we get to a point today and we say, okay, we're going to expend the 775,000. We do have the 1.35 um, to also consider for the additional. Or in final request. Is that accurate? Mayor and Commissioner Dean, that is correct. Okay. Any other comments or questions from the Commission? Yes, we'll discuss this. Yeah. Mr. 
Go ahead, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I've got a question for uh, Director Danielson regarding the pending community projects for community aid grant application process. I know it says 1.914 million um, with the removal of the Warren Stadium enhancement. Would that make that 1.214 million? Mayor, the subtotal there? Oh, yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Just mm -hmm. wanted to clarify, thank you. So your ask today is for us to make some decisions. Um, so my ask is if there um, is any further allocations that you would like to uh, have us bring forward at a commission meeting, bring a resolution, we can tabulate that for you and bring it forward as a resolution. Um, or if you wanted to express any other interests um, uh, for funding allocation, um, we can certainly um, take that and bring that forward to a commission meeting for the commission to vote on. So yes, I'm asking for some direction from the commission on what would you like to move forward for funding or if anything at all. <coughs> if you want, I can just jump in. Do you want me to start offering some amounts? Absolutely. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so I would propose that, um, and I'm open to discussing amounts, but just for the sake of starting the conversation. Um, and I'm sorry if my, I think my list pretty much matches up with the order that we had. Um, so I would propose for the um, comprehensive recreation plan funding it at $150,000. Um, that's the dollar amount that Parks um, recommended. Um, I would also, we don't have it on this list, but you did mention it before, um, the $15,000 for the ice warming hut. That's going to be included, I mean, the need for that will likely come up in that comprehensive plan as the director had noted. So I would like to see that 15,000 also funded. Um, Case Kids, 50,000. Exploration Works, 25,000. Solar, the solar projects on city property, I believe that from what Commissioner Logan was able to gather Funding two whole projects would be about 300,000, but there could be an opportunity for a Northwestern rebate that might bring it down. So I would, I'll just say 300,000, but there's potential that we could get part of that back. Um, so that is sponsored. Um, well, I would say, let's say 300, but it'd be great if it's actually 250. Just a brief, so, so the application period for uh, Northwestern Energy is May, which clearly we've missed in November. And I think chances are pretty decent that that 300 could be reduced, but there's no guarantee. Okay, so let's say 300. Um, last chance powwow demonstration day 2000. Um, family promise 300,000. Good Samaritan uh, day program 100,000. Um, the downtown public restroom, I would propose funding it. And I think that this is going to be part of those conversations of how we work out, you know, what are the agreements are. I would propose the city funding it at $58,000 and requesting that um, there be an application to the TIF fund, which would result in paying for half of the install costs and then reaching out to the county. Um, they do have some funding left in there. <coughs> We have contingency left. Then participating in that funding. Um, I yesterday I attended the um, listening session at St. Paul's, where um, it's actually a really great session um, discussing some of the issues that people who are unhoused, um, particularly in the area, some of the issues that they're facing. The bathroom came up multiple times. Um, I will say though that I don't necessarily think that the city is prepared to go to manage the ongoing maintenance. And so I would propose that And the county, all the county commissioners were there and heard that multiple times as well. Um, but I would like to see the BID take care of the maintenance. I don't think that's something that Parks is ready to take on um, or interested in taking on at this point. Um, so I think that is right for further discussion, but I think that, that could be a good contribution and would get some halfway there. 
Um, I'd also note that the BID did start a foundation. Um, I think it was three meetings ago, moving forward with Helen Area Community Foundation is their sponsor. And so I think that there might be other opportunity for folks to make, in particular businesses very interested in this, to make donations to that foundation to make it happen. Um, now, that, uh, I did have one other um, project that I would really like to see, and that is $200,000 into the Solar Loan Revolving Fund. Um, this is a really well used program. That does put my total at one almost 1.2 million, which would mean if we would go into that contingency piece that we've already released. I think that's okay and it's why it's there and that's why we released it. Um, and so those are my amounts. One thing that I'd like to kind of tee up for discussion later on is um, looking at, I think we're at almost $500,000 in a, a sidewalk loan program backlog. Um, if we could address a big chunk of that with some of those remaining contingency dollars, I think it would go a long ways, but um, I'm open to that discussion later on. Does anybody have um, from the previous meeting not the slide that showed our who agreed to what, but what the amounts were. I had a binder, but it is on my dining room table. I'm me. trying to get into my, I was thinking about that. And I, oh, Commissioner Dean, I think probably has yes, no, one, no one looked. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 It was the blue tab in my binder just so now I, just, I forgot my binder. I feel the pressure. Okay, let's see. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Everyone needs to pass it along. Commissioner Wilkin, if you're ready, it's going to take me one second to adjust my numbers or Commissioner. No, no. Go ahead. It's going to take me a second. I know. Okay. This whole comment, I'm pretty comfortable with what you proposed. Okay. Okay, then I'll go ahead. The ice rink, they have to pull them out. You, um, can you tell me what that is? The comprehensive recreation plan, I apologize. Okay. The ice rink is 15. Yeah, 15. The, the, the ice rink, 15. And the warming hut was 150. No, the warming hut was 15. Yeah. Warming the, hut was 15. The comprehensive The warming hut, yeah, 15. The comprehensive plan, 150. Yeah. yeah. And uh, K Kids, 50K. Exploration works, 30. The Regional Sports Authority, 64. Last chance, two. Family Promise, three. 300, sorry. Good Samaritan, 150. That's what I have on the list. Oh, yes, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for uh, Commissioner Dean for helping me with my numbers. Um, I would go for uh, Case Kids 50,000, the solar loan 300,000. Uh, good That's the solar loan program? Nope, the solar projects from Commissioner Hogan. And I'm sorry, how much? 300. 300,000? Yes. I will slow down. That's all right. Thank you. Uh, good Samaritan, 173. 
the BID public toilet uh, 200. I am comfortable with the 2000 for uh, last chance powwow. And then my, my caveat on the family promise is again, I, I would really like to see a, a, a refined or updated proposal. I am comfortable setting aside uh, 250,000 for emergency shelter and saying we will get there. Um, but the version of the proposal we received way back when uh, lacks some specificity and I'd, I'd like to see something a bit more, uh, but I'm comfortable holding 250,000 for the purpose of emergency shelter. Uh, and I believe that's it. Thank you. Commissioner Shirtley, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, with regards to the projects, uh, 64,000 or for the Helena uh, sustainable study for the rec center, I think $64,000. Um, and getting into the other projects, looking at the comprehensive recreation plan, um, 100,000. Solar project for the city, um, 300,000. Uh, K's kids at 50, exploration works, 50. Uh, family promise, uh, 100,000. Last chance, 2,000. But, Commissioner, someone's writing. So, oh, <laughs> yeah. Slow I'll slow her down. Yeah. Um, Thank you. You, you bet. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, Sheila. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, Commissioner, so, would you start again, please? Yeah, gladly. Uh, so the sustainability study for the Rec Center for the Helena Regional Sports Authority, 64,000, please. The comprehensive recreation plan, um, 150,000. Uh, the solar project on uh, city property at uh, 300,000. K's kids, I would like to do 50,000. Um, same thing for exploration works, 50,000. The Family Promise Client Services Building Emergency Shelter, 100,000. The Last Chance Powwow and Demonstration Day uh, for their full amount of $2,000. Um, Good Samaritan Warming Shelter Adult Day Care Pro or Adult Day Program, uh, 100,000. Um, which, you know, I, I, I'm actually should say 150,000 for that one. Uh, I think it's a good program. And then uh, downtown public restroom BID, I would like to do 125,000 with the caveat of working with the BID on cost sharing along with the TIF application. Um, I think uh, the BID, the conversations I've had, they're interested in a one-time fee with the city maintaining that. I think, uh, we have to take a good hard look at how that cost sharing is going to go. But uh, I think at least half of that uh, of the proposed amount for 125,000. And then um, the proposal to add, I, I know it's not on the list, but it's the uh, adding 100,000 to the sidewalk fund. I don't know if that's on the table still, um, but uh, it's just to show our commitment to uh, adding more sidewalks and accessibility to our city. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Everybody's done. Do you have? Oh, go ahead. Mayor, uh, Commissioner Logan, do you, you have said any, you went the long you stop stop with Commissioner? Yeah, I felt okay. like that was a reasonable. Thank you. And um, Mayor, if there are any, uh, I can probably these up, but if, I think there are a few differences between commissioners on what you would like to allocate. Um, and, uh, yeah. How would you like to handle that? Go ahead, Commissioner. I mean, Manager Burke. Mayor, I think there's two ways we can do it. Uh, <clears throat> put together a draft resolution for your review, outlining where you're in agreement and, and where there are some differences. Mm -hmm. um, 
this seems to be very close agreement on a number of issues. So if we could approach it that way, uh, we could, uh, I know that we won't be meeting on the 5th of July, but at our very next administrative meeting, put that in front of the agenda for further discussion so that I can be able to finalize the content of the resolution itself and the dollar amount that's workable. And, uh, I think that seems reasonable. And Director Daniels, I want to, for my section, I want to also include the public. Okay. I think I may have a little bit. So. For um, how much, Mayor? 50,000. 50? Yes, five zero. We're actually going to have to get together and compare notes to make sure that we're back. Yeah, I can say you Thank you. Yeah. She's, uh, she's been appointed. Okay. Um, do you have any other questions for us? Uh, no, Mayor. Um, that's all I have. Thank, Thank you. you. Do we have any public comments on this topic? This. <clears throat> John Dibney with the BID. Go ahead. Just want to thank you all for including um, some funding for the restroom uh, and significant funding. I do think we're going to get there. Um, but my board is less interested in maintaining it. As I as I mentioned, they might be. That doesn't mean they won't happen. Okay. So I'm excited about it. Um, <clears throat> I think TIF is a pretty good way to go after some money. Um, Going to put BID in a position of competing with, with our own constituents. The folks that pay taxes into the BID are the ones who can't apply for the TIF funding. Um, so that's a little bit awkward. Um, and mainly, I'm just happy to, that we're, I think we're going to work this out. And um, I appreciate you. Thank you. Any other? Yes. I just want to comment and thank you for taking our proposal serious. You know, there's a huge need to address the our folks in town who are homeless and wandering. Our goal is to get people off the streets as much as possible and into groups, which is exactly what we're seeing happen. But we need to build this from a grassroots on to the next step. So thank you for considering this very, very much. Do you have any others online, Madam Clerk? Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, I have no problem. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to mail ballot resolution for 2023 municipal election. The short version, Clerk Claiborne. <laughs> well, I intend to be pretty brief, uh, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, since you listened to me for so long yesterday, I feel like I owe you that. So um, I do not have a PowerPoint. I'm sorry, Kui, I cannot compete directly with you today. I'm keeping it simple today. Um, so as you can see in your packet, uh, there is a draft resolution presented to you. Uh, some of you who have been on the commission for some time have seen a version of this resolution before. It is um, somewhat of a ministerial act in order for us to request not uh, just the resolution or, or the election for the 2023 election cycle. So, ballot. Um, as you heard during the budget uh, discussions this past year, election costs are somewhat nebulous and difficult to predetermine. So, we do our best guess based upon historical dollars. Um, and so, this year we have put in the 2024 budget. Uh, fiscal year budget, $8,000 for a general election, $8,000 for a primary election. Um, and we do that with the hope that you will pass this resolution for a mail ballot, which saves us significant dollars. Um, so I will update you a little bit based upon this week's um, uh, file, filing deadline that passed uh, on Monday. In front of you, uh, I received a official letter from the elections office. I'll place that at your seats today, and, and there are copies available for the public. <clears throat> Noticing the city officially 
of canceling the primary election for the city of Helena due to a lack of contested races. So uh, currently, uh, as it sits, uh, the municipal election uh, for the primary isn't needed as we have had uh, two commissioners file for the regular seats and one commission or one member of the public um, currently seated Commissioner Shirtliff and the unexpired seat uh, formerly held by Commissioner Fever. He is required to run for that seat uh, per the city charter in section 201.9. Uh, uh, we also have the Helena Citizens Council, which hold two year terms. They're all required to run uh, for their seats again uh, every two years. Um, and currently none of those uh, seats are contested. Uh, save districts two and seven, which are uh, fully, uh, there was someone filing for each seat, excuse me. Um, the other districts currently don't have, have three filings or less for those seats. So the next step, according to the elections officer who I spoke with this morning, would be that there may be an opportunity for write-in ballots and they will, uh, for someone to file as a write-in candidate and they will accept those write-in candidates up to September 5th. And those uh, individuals would go on to the general ballot. Um, due to the change in this last le legislative session, I'm, I apologize, I don't have that bill number in front of me. It requires everyone that would like to be a write-in candidate to file with the elections office to avoid um, Mickey Mouse winning a seat. So <laughs> to put it bluntly, um, so I'm here to answer any questions. Uh, you'll notice in the resolution, it does reference the primary, which is no longer required, but the language in the resolution does indicate that if held or if needed. So uh, I spoke with the elections officer this morning and he said this resolution as it's written now will be sufficient. So I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you, uh, Clerk Clay. Commissioners, any comments or questions? Do we have any public comments? Mayor, I have a public comment on that. Thanks for your presentation. Um, so if I may, Mr. Mayor, I'll just uh, move right into the next one, which is uh, on your agenda as the sixth annual uh, uh, local government review. And I've asked, once again, uh, Ashley Kent, Associate Director from the Local Government Center at MSU Extension Office to join us today as they are uh, offering a, a wealth of knowledge and assistance in this process. It does happen uh, very rarely, I guess, uh, as to put it mildly, I'm, it's escaping me at this every moment. 10 every 10 years, I was gonna say 14, it's the end of the day, I apologize. Um, so I've asked Ashley to come here and give you maybe some high level discussion just to open this up. Um, this would be something that would be uh, on the ballot for a special election in approximately June of 2024, but there may be considerations for you all to discuss along the way. Um, and there is a timeline in the packet that I've provided to you from the local government center uh, for your discussion, along with the local government review sample budget for communities of various sizes. So uh, if I may, I'll turn it over to Ashley and she can uh, give you some notes on the process. Mr. Mayor, let's sneak up here so I can see you. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to our introduction of the voter review, the local government review. Montana's constitution is unique in that they require it requires us to do this every 10 years. It's a chance for the local government citizens to study the structure and the form of their government. The intention is that we are governing by design and not by default that we get a chance to say, hey, is this working for us or should we change some things? Um, what it is not, it is not a referendum on the current elected officials. So it's not a chance to kick out a commission member or um, the mayor or whoever it may be if they are not in agreement with the way that you are performing your duties. Um, so this next cycle, cycle will start next year in 2024. The election that is required to be placed on the ballot to ask the citizens if they would like to participate in the voter review will happen in the primary election in late spring. Some things to keep in mind for you prior to that are that you will have to pass a resolution to put that question on the ballot. I did pass out in front of you there in that packet that's um, got the timeline on the front. There's a sample resolution. You will define the jurisdiction that's being studied, in this case, the city, 
uh, how many commissioners you study commissioners you would like to see at least three it needs to be an odd number and how much money should be allocated to the study commission that can be either a dollar amount or a mill number and you are authorized to levy a mill above and beyond your existing mills for this purpose it's important to note that the people, this is a, a nonpartisan office, the people that are serving as study commissioners, they must live within the jurisdiction and they cannot be current elected officials of the jurisdiction. You will have a chance to have some input in the form of an ex officio member. So the city will designate one member to serve as an ex officio on the study commission. Uh, what else do we need to know? So they will, that question will go on the ballot in the spring of 2024. If your jurisdiction's voters decide to approve it, then you will have an election in the, in the fall, in November, to elect your study commissioners. If you had the situation where you had more seats open than study commissioners elected, you as the governing body would appoint your remaining members. Our office will offer a introduction, kind of orientation and training for study commissioners, likely in December of 2024, a chance for them to really understand what they're doing, what their charges, what their authority is, and how they can best work with you and the citizens to do this review. The study commission then will have basically 18 months to conduct their review, and they can decide whether to put forward a proposal for change to your structure or no proposal. Uh, the things that they will be looking at are your power. So right now, the way that city of Helena is set up, you are a self-governing power with your charter form of government that looks like a commission manager and your plan of government are all of those details inside of your charter basically what that means is that if you want to make any changes to your charter there are three ways to do it one is by petition of the people the second because you have adopted that charter form is through ordinance from the governing body and the third is the voter review process so this is a chance for the voters to come together and say do we like the structure is it serving us or is it not? I gave you some other documents in there. I gave you the timeline, the sample resolution, the budget, a sam uh, sample budget, and the list of cities and counties in Montana that currently operate under self-governing powers and with a charter and without a charter. So I think that's my quick version. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you so much for that presentation. Commissioners, any comments or questions? Our presenter. Do we have any public comment? Is Commissioner Shirley still around or you just got tired with him? <laughs> he is online. Still here, Mr. Mayor. I hear you. Do we have any public comments, Madam Clerk? Mr. Mayor, I have no public comment on this item. Mr. Mayor, I would add. I think what would be helpful for you all as a governing body right now is to think about with your charter, the way it's written. Is there anything in your charter that's causing pain points internally in your operations or in your relationship with the public? If so, this is a great time to look at changing that, to be better suited to help you do your jobs. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, other comments or questions from the commission? I'm telling you, I was rushing through on, this just now. On, just because it has to be in the resolution, since it's odd number greater than three for the, let's say, class one communities that have said, yes, we want to review what number that they normally choose of members. Sure. Uh, Mr. Mayor, member, or Commissioner, we see three is most common, five sometimes. Very rarely do we see seven. I think it would be potentially ill-advised to go bigger than that just because it would be hard logistically. But three or five is probably a good number. <clears throat> Thanks again. At this time, is there anyone from the public wishes to address the commission? Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, Commissioner Bass, public comment online. Manager Burke, <laughs> you have your marching orders. Yes, sir. Nothing else, this meeting is adjourned.